Sugden, thanks for joining us on VIP TV. Um, a lot of people getting excited for your fight with Shaq and Pitters behind closed doors live on Channel 5, August 22nd. Uh, your lockdown must have been frustrating because you was about a week from fighting Shaq and the first time when um, you were told no fight, lock yourself indoors. Yes, mate. Yeah, well, it was frustrating. I mean, um, when, we, when we first got announced, we did, we did ask, could we do it behind closed doors? Do you know what I mean? Well, is that a possibility? And they said, I think at that time, obviously, it was a lot. I understand why, why we went on that. It's just a shame, uh, unfortunate timing. But um, obviously, it's Gevel's uh, full camp now to prepare for Shakan. So, um, in a way, it's worked in our favour. I mean, how did you ease down when you were almost, I mean, was it 10 or 11, 10 days before? You must have been close to your final spa. You must have been yeah. a, a beast waiting to be unleashed on him. Yeah, I mean, yeah, well, we've just done our final spa. And then, um, yeah, we was ready to go. Do you know what I mean? Just the weight was good. And, do you know what I mean? It's just a fun bit to go then. And uh, you sort of, you do all that camp to peak. And uh, that's the best time when you when you get your hand raised and you get to actually sh show your skills on the night. Do you know what I mean? So it is hard because then I I tried to keep my training up, uh, but then I needed a week off because yeah. I can't maintain that um, intensity for that long. Um, I'm, but I'm lucky I live in the same. Obviously, still live with my dad, so I've got like I can train with him. Do you know what I mean? He's my coach, so it was like give us time to work on some technical stuff. But it was hard. Because um, you you do all that hard work for that high at the end, and you didn't, you don't get that. Do you know what I mean? So um, I think uh, this time it's good. I'm going to be even better and even more hungry when I get in there. And I think Shekhan will be the same. And I think yeah. it makes for more fine. Yeah, I mean, how, how would it be for you fighting behind closed doors? I mean, I know it's, it sounds a daft question. There's only you two in the ring, but in the Midlands, you've got a wild following. You sell bundles of yeah. tickets, so yeah. If it had gone ahead, you know, is it Coventry? I, 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 God only knows how many supporters you'd have had in the arena. Yes, mate. Yeah, we sold um, just over a week out, and we sold all our allocation. We had about three hundred of them. We, had, we, had, we was asking for more, so um, it, w it would have been a it would have been a good night. And I think, obviously, being in Coventry, close to Shack, I need to have had a few there. But I can imagine we'd about sold him to be honest, because I know he, he do not quite have the same following. It's harder when you're in a big city because a lot more boxes to follow. Um, but, I'm, um, yeah, I mean, it will be different uh, behind closed doors, but I'd spar every day and train every day behind closed doors. So it's not like it's any different to that. Do you know what I mean? And I've, I think once, as soon as you start exchanging them first few blows, I think it'll be like any other. The only thing that's going to be weird is when you're walking out and um, in the venue, do you know what I mean? It's going to be weird without hearing that crowd noise and stuff like that. Because during the fights run before you, you're like, it gets you a bit in the, do you know what I mean? It gets you in the zone a bit, but you're not going to hear that as much. Yeah. Um, but it'd be nice, do you know what I mean? It'd be good to see, um, be able to see some of the other fights and, yeah, just get in there and do my thing. I'm looking forward to it. I don't think there'll be too much social distancing in the pubs in your village that night, by the way. <laughs> no, not at all, mate. No, no, it could be uh, around me. It'd be, um, and it could it's on Channel 5 as well, everywhere we'll have it on. Um, but I don't, I know last time when it was uh, on this, when I fought Craig Richards, it was the same. I mean, we only took down a week's notice and we took 50 down. And then, uh, and there was all the tickets we could get, because obviously it was last minute. Um, but yeah, and then it, I've seen some videos after on Facebook. And <laughs> in time. I think a few of them got kicked out of pubs. <laughs> Um, the Craig Richards fight, I mean, that was a, a gamble to take that a week's notice, but you, yourself and you, your dad who trains you um, took it. That really was the gamble, although, you know, it was a draw, it was the gamble that paid off because you leapt from obscurity because you'd been fighting purely in the Midlands, they knew you, but no one knew you in the wider British audience, did they, until then? No, yeah, exactly, and it was a good, it was a good platform, and it was like a calculated risk, do you know what I mean? I think where there's risks there's rewards um, and I think if I sit back too long and wait for the perfect opportunity no one's you never you never get that perfect opportunity do you know what I mean it's always going to be stacked against you in some way but I felt fit and I was all, already fit for a six rounder so 
I thought, well, let's try and do a, a 10 round and we'll go out and give it all we got. And then obviously it got changed to eight rounds uh, the day before the weigh-in. Um, but yeah, we went out there and, and, and did, did a job really um, on, on a week's notice and no sparring. So this time, um, yeah, it put me on the map, but this time I want to put myself on the map even more. It's not just a contender and someone that draws, um, someone that can win and go on to bigger and better things. I mean this with the greatest respect. You know, going back what I said, that you only boxed in the Midlands. Uh, um, are you the best light heavyweight in Britain that nobody knows? Because we all talk about Buaxi, Yard, um, Lyndon Arthur, you know, Craig yeah. Richards. Yeah, I believe I am. Um, I, I believe I'm up there. I will be up there with them boys. Um, uh, and after this fight, I think I'm going to prove it. And uh, I'm just, I'll just be happy to fight who they put in front of me. And uh, I'm, I do want them fights, do you know what I mean? Them big fights, as ev everyone does. And um, I'm hoping one day, uh, this isn't the end for me, the British level. I want to be able to move on to bigger and better things. So I'm not never look past the person in front of me. Shakan's my toughest fight yet, and I've trekked it that way. Um, but I believe he was a 50 50 fight with Craig Richards, who I drew with on a week. So people like going on about eyes. Oh, like I look at the comments and things, and I'm the underdog on paper, yeah, to him, yeah. which uh, takes the pressure off. But at the same time, like I think people are overlooking me, uh, as did with the Richards fight, which is mental, really, um, because I think my style is more suited to trouble Shaka than Richards is. Um, uh, so it should be interesting on the night when, uh, after the first few rounds, people start realizing I'm the real real deal. And I know Shaq's real deal as well, but that's what. You don't get given British titles on a plate. Do you know what I mean? You've got to fight. So he's going to have to fight for it. But I'm going to fight for it even harder. And I know, I know I'm putting in the work now to do that. Yeah. Um, your, dad, your dad, Dean, trains you and manages you, I believe. Um, what, has, has he managed to find, you know, six foot six sparring partners or near to it? Uh, yeah, I mean, we've done all our main spawn with Jose Burton, who's obviously six oh, foot yeah. four. Former British champion, um, we're doing, we was doing it for the fight in March when it was first oh, announced. Yeah, yeah. Now we're doing it uh, this one. Obviously, it's perfect spine for him as well because in that tournament, everyone's either my hot or shorter. So, who's left in it? So, it works out bang on. Um, we've got other guys, um, like we had amateurs before, but obviously, at the minute with the lockdown, we can only work with pros. So, we had amateurs that were taller. And we've got a heavyweight in the gym who's, who's 98 kilos pure muscle. So for fitness and get find that range, it's, it's perfect. Do you know what I mean? I've always fought tall people and sparred tall people. It's not a problem. I think it works. It could work in my favour. Um, and I, I've seen Ushekhan sparring as well, and I don't think they possess the same threats as I do. Um, I think, do you know what I mean? It, it, he's relying on me just walking straight forward. That Craig Richards fight, I had a broken nose going into that. Bro broke it in the second round. I had to change my game plan. I couldn't just go on and move and box because I couldn't. Obviously, I had to get involved, get close, personal, um, which I will have to do against Shakan. But I also think I can outbox him as well. It's, so I'm looking forward to it and I'm looking forward to showing another side to me, um, which people will like to watch. Good. That's right. oh, we all want to watch that. I mean, it's just a, it's a fantastic matchup yourself and Shakan. But yeah. going back to Hosey Burton, you know. Hosey, you know, realistically, if you, you know, you win the fight, you could be defending against him next. You know, when you're sparring with someone who is that much of a rival, so to speak, even though you might get on, you know, what goes through your mind with sparring? Do you, you know, do you think you could be facing each other next and stuff like that? Obviously, it's real sparring. I know um, Craig Richards meant to fight the winner of this one, which I'd like to do next. Um, I know Jose's got in this MTK tournament, so I, I don't. Is is them fights will be he'll be signed to top rank then, um, if he wins that. So it does put us on separate paths. But I did say to him in the end, if uh, when we get to the end of our careers, the big money fight, we'll we'll do it. Do you know what I mean? And it, them spars are, are great spars. Do you know what I mean? It's some of the best sparring I've had. Um, he's tough. He's tough. He's rangy. He he can bang. It's, it's a great spar, and I think it's set me up perfectly for this fight and uh, won't mind keep working together. But obviously, yeah, it, like like we said to each other, it's like it could happen one day. But 
at the, at the minute we're on two different routes and uh, he's got his route and I've got mine and it works out perfectly that we're to help each other. Yeah, and if the money's right, you fight each other anyway. So, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's what we're all, we're all in it for. Um, but like, I want to be, I want to take over the Britain for now. Jose's 32. If he gets his top rank thing, I think he won, he's had nearly 30 fights as a professional. only lost one. And he's going to be wanting to go on to world titles and stuff like that. He's at that level now. And he's, he's at that age where he wants to do that. Do you know what I mean? So I've got to build myself still up to that yet because I'm in this British title level. But once I win this, there's no stopping me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just one final question before we let you go. Can you tell us a bit about your kickboxing background? Because um, I don't know anything about kickboxing. I'm not going to pretend um, I do. I mean, I can watch it. But uh, what level did you get to in, in that combat sport? Uh, so in kickboxing, yeah, I got to the... I only was in it for three to four years professionally and I, I, I'm the highest ranked glory fighter ever which is the premium organisation in kickboxing so it was K1 I was the youngest ever fighter to be signed on a permanent contract to K1 and then when it when glory sort of took over I then moved over to glory and I'm still the highest ranked UK fighter ever on glory I was number two in the world um, and yeah I fought uh, a big metal grown art who's probably the biggest name on my record. He's um, he won the K1 Max, which when you win the K, when it was about the K1 Max, when that was the biggest in Japan, there, it was a 16 man tournament, and you win a million dollars at the end. And he won that tournament. And then I fought him, uh, sort of not last minute, but with a five weeks notice in Las Vegas. That was my last kickboxing fight, and I wasn't supposed to win. Like I'm not in my boxing fights, and I had, I won the fight. So. Um, I got to meet Floyd Mayweather and Mike Tyson and people like that when I was out there. And it was, um, yeah, it was, I think, I think I've think i gone through my career be, being the underdog, being the younger guy and the, the guy that's coming up. But now I'm getting into my prime, 26 now. So what everyone had, like, age and experience on me, it doesn't happen now. I don't think, I don't think pe a lot of people respect my kickboxing experience going away from home and fighting on caution coming out victorious, do you know what I mean? And having it all against me. I've had it like that before, worse than, worse than it is now. This is 50-50, this is do you know what I mean? Like, um, whoever wins this sort of moves on. Um, so I'm looking forward to, to fighting and, and, yeah, and doing it in front of hundreds of thousands on Channel 5, do you know what I mean? Because I know they get the highest viewers because... Hello? It's free, and uh, no one really wants to turn down free free sport. <laughs> yeah, and hey, you, you, you must probably be. I'm, get, I'm guessing your fight must probably be the most watched fight in Britain this year because of the terrestrial TV. Yeah, exactly, and that, that's that's exactly what us as fighters want. We want to be able to perform and put on a show, and it's good for my sponsors. I'm lucky; I've got some loyal sponsors that have sort of followed me from the kickboxing, but supported me even more during the boxing. Um, and they get the exposure that they've sort of been waiting for. And the gym, um, it would be nice to bring the British title back to Sugi Gym because everyone has always looked at us as a, a kickboxing gym. But no oh. KBC now is like, we've got senior cha uh, heavyweight champion. Um, we've got a junior guy that's been to European championships but in the ABAs. Do you know what I mean? We've got lo loads of good boxers and uh, we, we teach it. Our kickboxers had to box properly, so it's. Do you know what I mean? It's not not like a normal kickboxing gym. There's that many different kickboxing styles of kickboxing out there. Ours is a lot, lot more versatile. And I think I'll 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 like to show that on the night. We can do it in the pro game. We can do it in the amateur game. Um, and I'd love to bring the belt back to Newark and Nottingham. You know. There's been some, um, you know, fantastic kickboxers that have gone pro. Carl Thompson, who was a world cruiserweight champion, was a it yep. was a high-end kickboxer, wasn't it? Yeah, that's it. And Klitschko. Um, Klitschko, yeah. Taylor, yeah. Kickboxer. Um, Ricky Atom, when he was younger, was a kickboxer. George Groves kickbox. Mm -hmm. uh, Jonathan Faxton, he kickboxed for ages. Nigel Ben. I think people forget these guys did do that. And uh, I've been in combat sports since I was six, seven years of age. Do you know what I mean? Not always fighting... You can't fight full contact then, but from seven to eleven, I fought light, light contact. But it's just 
getting shots used to being thrown at you and sparring and training and stuff like that. Like, and then at 11, I went into amateur boxing as well as kickboxing and did them both alongside each other. Do you know what I mean? I've had probably over 200 fights all together, like, including all my amateur fights. So like, I'm, I've got the experience and like, I've been, been around the block. I'm used to the range and stuff like that. I've done it all my life. So I think this is where I get to show my... This is my real test now, do you know what I mean? I've got a guy who's six foot six. He's the favourite. Um, and I'm going to prove everyone that I'm the real deal, do you know what I mean? And go in there and get the job done. Chad, thanks very much for speaking to us on VIP TV. Uh, you're a great... You, you, I spoke to um, Shacken last night, and one thing you both do, you can both fight and you're both great talkers without um, being threatening in your talk, which is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, wicked. No, thank you. Thank you yeah. for having me on. Um, he, he holds you in the highest esteem, by the way. He only says good about you. So it's nice that uh, you're both such good talkers and uh, you speak well of each other. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Like, we both, like, I know Shaq has been avoided, do you know what I mean? So, and I'm, uh, I'm willing to step up there and t take the plate like he's willing to fight me, do you know what I mean? And it's, uh, it's, I think it's a great fight. Two guys from the Midlands who both think they can beat the other one. What's more exciting than that? Do you know what I mean? Hey, you're not just king of Britain, king of the Midlands. That means a lot to you. I know that. <laughs> yeah, that's it, me. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Now I'm looking forward. Thanks very much for your time, Chad. You're a top man. All right. Cheers. Thank you very much, Steve. Bye bye. Thank you. For all boxing info, news, and latest interviews, amateur and pro across and off, click on subscribe. VIP boxing promotions. Also, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook.